We're here today to see if you can beat Fallout 4 with only 10 shots. Now the idea for this run came from Casual Loop when he asked me if I'd be able to do this run with an instigating Gauss rifle here in Fallout 4. I told him I needed to look into the factions to see which one had the least amount of combat, you know. In I spent the last few days looking into it and getting the run done. Because it's... I never thought of this run in Fallout 4. Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, fine, but Fallout 4, since the first faction everybody comes across is the Minutemen, Minutemen, their quests involve a lot of run into bandit stronghold, kill a bunch of bandits, stuff like that. So, we're not going to be siding with the Minutemen. I've spent the last couple of days plotting out a fairly competent run to where I think I can get this done with only 10 shots. So we make a beeline to the Museum of Freedom. We're not here to help Preston Garvey and his lot. We're here to get a fusion core and get the power armor off the roof. Since we're not really going to be killing much, might as well have a good amount of protection against the dangers of the wasteland. Now, while outside, I could have jumped from the church over onto the vertebrate on the roof and got the power armor that way, but I'd still need a fusion core for it, so I figured just run through it. It's easy enough to bridge the gap once you're up top here. Just run past the bandits, raiders, whatever you want to call them. Pop open the door here, and you can jump across this gap right here while sprinting. Takes right over to the door, you can hop on out. Grab the set of power armor, the minigun if you want it. All the other junk and caps sitting around here too to take back to base. That gives us our first set of power armor. Gonna be a great set of defensive armor for the run here. After we get that, we start heading toward Fort Hagen. Alright, we can get that marked. Fast travel back here later. Saves us a bunch of time. Whilst here, I figure I'm gonna pick up a bunch of blood packs because... We're going to need stim packs this run. You can make stim packs with antiseptic, steel, and uh, blood packs. Maybe some other things too. The thing that always hung me up was the blood pack. So, right here at the clinic at Fort Hagen, you can pick up a bunch. They respawn every so often whenever the cell resets. So, it's easy enough to come back here and keep in a good supply of them, you know. Pick this lock here, pick up everything we can. Most stims and drugs and stuff, we're just going to be selling off for extra caps so we can pick up more stim packs as needed. And some other odds and ends for junk, if and when we need it. Pick up everything else to sell. Trek back to, well, trek to Diamond City for the first time now. Wait for the whole gate opening thing. I understand when you first come across a settlement in any of the Fallout games, it's supposed to be a grandiose open the gates type thing. Right, you're supposed to come here directly after the Museum of Freedom and help Preston Garvey. It's supposed to be its Megaton moment, or its Rivet City moment, you know. Doesn't really matter, we head past them. Head on in to sell off a bunch of junk that we've been collecting up. Now we can start stocking up on stem packs right now. And soon we will need to start stacking up on a uh, fusion course while I'm heading toward Nick Valentine's location I get stopped by a super mutant suicider now Vats gives you a small amount of super armor couple that with our uh, power armor to begin with and you can tank a shot well not a shot but you could tank a super mutant suicider without too much of a problem After that runoff, to get to Park Street Station, head on in. I'm going to skip through a bunch of this part right here because getting into the vault's not hard. Just run past the trigger men. Sure, they'll shoot you, but it's their job too, right? Squeak on through, run past all of them, get to Nick Valentine. Again, the vault's not huge. Not too much of a problem. You can hack the console there without needing to deal with Diego, Domino, whatever the fuck the dude's name is. Problem is, Nick Valentine 
whatever the AI is, the AI trigger point is for this, he will not talk to you unless the trigger men are dealt with. Or maybe if you sneak in, you could somehow get this to trigger, but I could not for the life of me get this to work. He won't talk to you, even with the trigger man attacking him, he won't do anything. So I figured, okay, well, I could probably try sneaking in, but I'm not spec for that, and I'm not gonna, quite frankly, waste another hour trying it. So, I'm gonna make a decision here. We can't kill stuff, but there are different missions in this game where they give you escorts. Like, uh... Like the Cambridge Police Station, when you go and help Paladin dance. He's not technically a follower at that point, but he still helps deal with combat. Now right here we are using Piper as a, as a follower to be able to help us out, that way we can get past this part. Could I have gone about it in a different way? Sure. But each of the Fallout games has a point where you have to have followers and or escorts with you, right? If you ask them to come with you, I consider them a follower. If they're just part of the mission, I consider that an escort. Well, you don't need to keep them alive. You're, they're escorting you instead of you escorting them, right? So we let Piper use our power armor to deal with the trigger men inside. She deals with it. We get the password off it. We open up the door and... I thought the, the game was just bugged at this point because Nick's not talking to me. So I was thinking, oh, well, maybe maybe I could just restart it, full run restart, try it out again, and it'd work. But no, he eventually started talking and lit a cigarette and whatnot. So we can move on from this point. We got Nick out, which is the first, I guess, milestone in the quest. Come out to deal with Darla and Dino... Skinny Malone, that's that's his name. I didn't know that if you go too close to the door, they automatically aggro on you. Here I am, running around, trying to kite him around, not die in the process. While uh, Piper and Nick do the rest of the work. Took the rifle out, put it away. Just kite him around. It's easier once you get the hang of it. Those 45 SMGs, though... They, uh, they're fucking annoying to deal with. Pick up some stim packs, some other stuff here and there. Just kind of hang out and let them hash it out on their own. Now that each one's aggroed on Nick as an escort in this mission and Piper as a follower. That way they can just deal with it there. Also, a fucking wooden baseball bat against like a ton of metal armor. Still staggering them. It's, it's just stupid. Loot everything up, head back to Diamond City, talk to Nick. We all know how this plays out. We talk to Nick, go over to Kellogg's house. Easy enough. He can't pick the lock, even though his fingers are pretty much lock picks or some shit. So we have to go to the mayor to get the key, since we can't pick the lock. And then you can either try to sweet talk the mayor or bribe the mayor... Or just do what I do and steal the key off of him. How a dude in a ton of power armor just crunch, you know, kneeling behind you. Stealing a key out your pocket, I, I don't know. Try to get as close as Nick as possible while jumping down. Come on in, hit the button. There we go. Loot all this shit, because why not? Also take this stuff out of the safe. Now I can't remember if this is a mod or if this was just one of the additions from when Fallout 4 updated. But it's a uh, Desert Ranger armor and shit like that. Pretty cool, so I take that. Gonna use that later on for my basic armor. Get dog meat so we can go to Fort Hagen. We've already marked that on the map, so it's easy enough to uh, get to. Just fast travel to it. Just gonna blitz through this here. Instead of subjecting you to sitting here for the next 10 minutes. Watching me just run past everything. Just speed it up. You get the gist of what's going on. 
A lot of the synths in the hallway is still staying there. And yes, Dogmeat is with me here. He's not really doing anything since we're running past everything. Again, I consider him more an escort for this mission. He's not really a damage dealer follower anyway. And here we are, Kellogg. And there's Kellogg dead. First shot that we've had to take so far. Loot everything that's not nailed down off of him. Well, I guess bits of his brain are fucking nailed down. But, open the doors. Get the uh, update from the uh, terminal entries or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Access logs, there you go. And we can just head out. Brotherhood of Steel shows up as they do. Reminds me of the airships that they went from the west coast to the east coast with. Except most of those airships went down, if memory serves me right. And at that point in time, they were also allowing super mutants into their ranks, I think. Strange. Weird, weird Fallout lore. So we head to the Cambridge Police Station to help the Brotherhood. Help Helen dance. He does his thing, kills all the ghouls, easy enough. Bunch of free loot for us. At this point, I consider... Well, he is what he is. He's, a uh, keep saying it, an escort. Because he's escorting us through this mission. Uh, we will be doing the Arc Jet one as well. Since they're not assigned as a follower to us, it's fine. Outstanding. And if we hit another brick wall, we will be using another follower just to deal with that. But if and when we need to, we can deal with that. Start following Dance. Realize I've already been to Arcjet on my way to Fort Hagen, so just fast travel to it. So we fast travel... Tark Jet, run on in. Paladin Dance automatically shows up. Loot some stuff here and there. He does his whole corporations ruin the world thing. We're just going to blitz past all this too. Talk to Dance a little bit here and there. Follow him through the rest of it. He's the walking tank with a, you know, working gun at this point. So, it's on him. He's, uh... I don't know if he actually uses Righteous Authority or if it's just, uh unnamed piece of gear that no one uses unless you get it. Then I guess if Paladin Dance was a follower, you could then give him back Righteous Authority to use. I don't know. I don't really mess with Fallout 4 too often. Keep heading down. Loot everything we can. Keep heading further down. Now, there's a couple of ways to deal with this part here with the synths. You can either... Head out and help Paladin Dance kill the synths. In which case, you have to shoot and kill shit. Or, you can start up the engine that just cooks the synths and dance along with it. Which I guess he's a synth at this point, maybe? So, whatever. But the thing you can't do is just let Dance do his thing, because the synths will just keep spawning in indefinitely. Also, if that door is left open, you will die. Done that before. So we cook off the synths here. Since we're not going out and shooting anything. Let that interesting little part finish. We head on out to check on dance and collect up all the ammo and guns and shit. Money in the bank and resources in our storage. Head on up. Synths up here. Easy enough to deal with again for dance. I always figured the uh, the cattle prod deals really shouldn't do any damage to power armor, right? Well, some electrical weapons can fry power armor, and while other sets of power armor have been fried from EMPs, a cattle prod or a shock baton, whatever you want to call it, it's pretty much just a fucking stun gun on a pole, a handle. They don't, they don't work the way you would think in uh, movies and games. So, shouldn't really do anything to power armor. A lot of shit shouldn't do anything to power armor. But uh, game mechanics need to be what they are. Finish talking to Dance, head back to the police station. Hop up on the vertebrate to head over to the Fridwin. So that we can talk to Maxon and pick up our new set of power armor. Uh, this is the Desert Ranger armor that I'm wearing. A couple of modifications here and there. It's okay armor. It's like on par with a Raider set. 
The full body set of Raider armor. Talk to Maxon. He gives us our new power armor and the promotion and all that. This is the power armor we're going to be using for the rest of the run. Dance is happy about it, so whatever. Head outside onto the observation deck to talk to Maxon. Tells us about Fort Strong. Whatever, the, the fort that's full of super mutants and whatnot. And while it was originally thought that you have to kill everything in Fort Strong, you don't need to do shit. Paladin Dance is given to you as an escort. You could fly up there with a helicopter, in which case you'd need to shoot mutants and stuff from the helicopter before you land. Or you could just run there. You run there and Paladin Dance can handle the shit. Again, just speed it up so it's easier for you to see. And yeah, just hang out while Dance does his job. Both outside and inside. And when you're inside, once he's done, once the mission is technically over, he tells you to go on ahead back to the Pridwin without him. So, yeah, it... And this, this is a reoccurring theme for quite a few missions in Fallout 4. They give you an escort for those missions. So we might as well use them, right? It's a mechanic of the game. It's there. Here we are inside the fort, top floor of it. Again, easy enough. Just open up the doors and stuff so the mutants can come funneling in and let Dance do his thing. Just speed past it. Again, just run around in circles, kite them all toward Dance. Loot some shit along the way. You're going to need it later on anyway. When we build the uh, teleport hijacker thing. Once Dance finishes mopping up the rest of these mutants, we can head downstairs. Gotta drop some shit. Mutant... I always thought the mutant armor that you pick up, that you should be able to use that as, like, power armor. Just think of it. Like, bits of mutant armor being used as power armor on a power armor frame. Or the inverse. A mutant, a super mutant using power armor as normal armor. Well, they'd need to be like different pieces and stuff put in different ways. I'm pretty sure that'd be pretty cool. Kind of like a Frank Horgan situation. Although I don't think he was a super mutant. I think he was just heavily mutated. Any which way. Be something that they could think of later on. There you go. Paladin Dance has cleared out Fort Strong. We don't need to deal with anything. He tells us to head back to the Pridwin. We're good. That means we can pick back up on the main quest. And start going from there. One of the main reasons I wanted to get the Brotherhood to this point before moving forward was the Glowing Sea. Uh, there's a lot of shit in the Glowing Sea that hits hard, so might as well have a better set of power armor that you get for free to be able to head there. Head through Kellogg's Memories, sits there with the synth and whatnot. The other synth comes and gets the kid's synth and they kind of fuck off. Well, Kellogg is then sent to go deal with Virgil Left. in the Glowing Sea. Speaking of, we go see Virgil in the Glowing Sea. He tells us how to get into the Institute, tells us we're going to need a Corsair chip and all that happy good shit. Also wants us to get his research or whatever on the forced evolutionary virus. It's a fucking mouthful every goddamn time. The forced evolutionary virus so that he could turn himself back into a person. If he could do that, why didn't he... I don't know, can't he just cure all super mutants at that point? Really, would you want to be cured if you'd been a super mutant for, I don't know, 100 years? Because I guess they started cropping up after the events of the Great War. Eh, doesn't matter. Head on over to Green Tech, or whatever the fuck this place is called, so that we can deal with the Corsair. Uh, we're just going to skip through most of this. Just blitz through it. Uh, it's just more run past everything, get to the load cell, run past everything. That way we don't need to... Sit and wait and need to explain everything. Again, most of the AI doesn't allow them to chase you non-stop. I do get turned around here in a couple of different places, but, you know, that's just kind of how these buildings are. 
Right there, head the wrong way. Ah, well. Head on up. Run past all the traps. Most of the traps you spring are delayed. Head up through the elevator. Just kind of hang out. As I'm heading through here, I realize that you can hear the Corsair talking. So I figured, hey, maybe I can get a maybe I can get a bead on him to shoot him now to not need to deal with him later. And yes, you can. From two or three floors below, or however many flights of stairs here. Uh, you can take the Corsair out. So he's gone. We're down eight shots now. But we have the Corsair chip now. Along with some other armor and odds and ends we can break down or sell off as needed. A couple of stealth boys too. Always great. Head back to Dr. Romari. Tell her we got the chip. She says she can't do anything about it. So we have to go meet the railroad. On our way there we get... Jumped by another super mutant suicider again. Vats gives you super armor to a point, so you might as well use it. Beyond that, run past everything. Here's the second point of this. Right, the ghouls here, not really too bad. They're doing minor chip damage. And while it would be annoying to try to punch the code in with them knocking me around, I realized that the Institute does... Not Institute, the Railroad does a whole scripted thing like Nick Valentine does. You walk in, the lights come on, all that shit, right? Freezes you in place as you talk to him. I don't think I'd be able to do that with enemies, so I went, I got Piper, had her clear out the ghouls and stuff there. Done. That way I can go in, deal with the next point of it. Easy enough. Sent Piper back, went down, actually met these guys. And we're killing the railroad, because we're siding with the Institute. Now, doing my research here for this run, I know that the railroad, not railroad, the Institute has you come and kill the railroad. There we go. Uh, if you side with them. So if you take them out now, which is their leaders, Desdemona, Gloria, I think Deacon, Tinker Tom, maybe Drummer Boy. You take out the, like, named NPCs for the railroad, and that automatically competes, uh, completes that quest when you get it from Father later on. So I figured, okay, well, take them out now, and then that should be smooth sailing to where I don't need to really kill anything till the very tail end of the run with the Institute. Play my cards right, little fucking around here and there, and we'll be able to get this done. So, that's what we're doing. Got the chip decoded. We'll head on out now, back to the Brotherhood, so that we can begin building this relay hijacker thing. So it anyway, with the Institute dead, sure that gives us three more shots to work with for the end of the game. Now, me which is going to be just fine. Head back to Max and talk to him. He's all elated that we're going to build the transponder hijacker relay thingy. With the Brotherhood's help, even though they're not supplying anything, they're just having someone read a fucking blueprint for us. We get everything hooked up. Hop in the teleporter. Teleport to the Institute. Ta-da. Meet our father's son here. Meet Sean. I know. I know. You've gone to set Like I said, we're gonna be working with them for uh, the rest of the game. Mostly because I think the Institute has some of the fewest missions after you beat them. After you meet them. My mistake. Uh, we head around, meet everyone we're supposed to, loot everything that's not nailed down, pick up these synth relay grenades. Might need them later. This is a just in case policy. Head back to Father, talk to him some more. He sends us on to a mission to go to the weird sunken ship thing to reclaim the... Gabriel? I think his name is. Uh, head of the raiders here. He's atop his sunken ship. Ditch our power armor for now because you can't swim in power armor. It's easier just to swim up to the uh, ship and then run up. And this right here is one of the most fucking annoying things about Fallout 4. 
Why the fuck a character would use a goddamn nuclear catapult in melee range? Happened multiple times. I just kind of lucked out and was able to run past the dude and shot it off into the fucking ocean. Still, though, the fucking stupidest thing about this game. Alright. No one on God's green earth is going to be ten feet away from a dude and shoot him with a fucking nuke. Super, super mutant suiciders are one thing already, but this is this just stupid. Alright. Anyway, we use his recall code, get him all fucked up. Let the Corsair do his job, since he's escorting us here. The Institute pretty much always sends you out with an escort, if you haven't noticed. So he's doing his thing. He gets knocked down, he gets back up again. You know, never gonna keep him down. And then we just wait for him to plink at these guys. The Institute laser rifles are kinda shit. I don't know why they don't go with like a plasma rifle. Hits a little harder, you know. After that, jump off the back of the ship, swim back around, grab our power armor, teleport back to the Institute. All is good in the world. Head back, talk to Father. You'll have a contact waiting for you, Justin. He sends us over to Bunker Hill. This is another one you would expect it to be a huge to-do, right? There's a battle going on outside with the railroad and the Brotherhood of Steel, and the Institute swoops in with its synths and figure it's gonna be a wholesale slaughter, and you, you can just run past everybody. Jump up on the cars, jump past the gate, run directly underground. Run to the synths, use the recall codes, and you're done. In fact, the Brotherhood, at this point, you're not even enemies with them, so they're not going to shoot at you. Uh, the Institute's not going to shoot at you. So the only ones that don't like you are the Railroad. So you can just run past them. Just like this. Mind you, power armor, a little annoying to jump around in. And the head bob also gets on my nerves. But it's a mobile tank, so you might as well use it, you know? Wedge ourselves past the guys here in these narrow passages. No idea what this place here would have been used for before the war. Looks like somebody knocked out a wall under the memorial to come here. That's weird. Maybe city infrastructure or something. Anyway, we come across the synths. Use their recall codes. To shut them down so that we can teleport them back. Again, the, the synth component that's in each synth, I thought that was like a relay deal to where they could just teleport them back. Or, you know, maybe like a three laws of robotics thing to never violate the Institute and go against them. That could have also worked. After that, it's as simple as run out, go meet Father on top of the CIT ruins. Commonwealth Institute of Technology, which, if you didn't know, there's more than one Commonwealth in the United States. Go to the director's meeting. Sean tells us he's dying, and he wants us to be the new director of the Institute. And then we have to talk to What's-Her-Face, I forget her name, so that we can go and get the beryllium agitator from Mass Fusion. And at this point, now the Brotherhood hates us. Which is fine. We'll blitz past everything here. Get the car, get the code, run to the elevator, go down. We don't really need to kill anything. She teleports to us anyway. He's a stealth boy and just kind of chill out as we go down. Best not to draw attention. They, they blow up a generator. You run past everything and then flip a switch and the generator somehow okay. Just stupid. We get dropped off the ground floor, head even lower. Get to the Beryllium Agitator. Think about dropping a weapon that she might be able to use for what's to come next, but I don't have any an ammo for anything, so... She's shit out of luck. We get the Beryllium Agitator. It sets off the security system. Now we have to deal with the Sentry Bot. And by we, I mean... Not me. Run around the room, get their attention, the sentry bot and the Protectron. They aggro on you, because they see you as the player as more of a threat than your escort there. Lock ourselves over here in the decontamination room and let 
what's her face plink at him with her little blue laser till he's dead and bam we uh, hit the button cycle through the airlock procedure we're good because I think we have to get close enough to the door up here for the assault trons to kick in in which case it's just kind of hang out while she deals with the assault trons now which you figure this body type for like assault trons and whatnot would be better for like care robots in a medical sense because there are I want to say protectrons the danger will Robinson shit that are used in hospitals and whatnot. You figure these ones here with like the human form would be better suited for that. Could just be me though. Yes. Head back to the institute. Talk to father again. That way we can get sent on to our next mission. Ah, Bethesda jank. Gotta love it. Uh, this one here is the one I picked up the relay grenades for. Because I remember while they do teleport some synths in to help you, you're kind of on your own for the most part. And you can't just run in and talk to the people. Ran around for a little while waiting for the synths to pop in. None popped in right away. Because I think there's like damage thresholds you have to do. Like take out a raider or two raiders before they pop a synth in. Go start using some of these relay grenades here. Toss them out. Also going to speed up time. That way it's easy enough. Some synths are getting popped in on their own. Uh, at this point, I it goes idle because I was checking my smoker outside. I was making some jerky. So it just kind of sits here for 20 minutes. Something. I don't know. Sit here for a while while it just kind of does this. Strange thing is... Not all of the raiders are dead at this point. Right? You'll see here in a second when it finally picks up here. Not all the raiders are dead. There's still one, the legendary one, that's right there. Why he wasn't shooting at me the entire time and killing me, I don't know, but... Toss a couple more synth relay grenades so that they can start doing their job. He's almost dead, and if we can keep his attention, then any Mark One synth should be able to take this dude out. And that's one of the synths that was popped in through the mission. Toss the next two there. They pop in. They take them out. That's the outside taken care of. Head back inside. They, you know, teleport in, kidnap this dude. Now I'm guessing teleport back out. We install the random boosting equipment in Diamond City Radio so that we can play our message to the Commonwealth. Then we head in, back to the Institute, hook the beryllium agitator up into our reactor, let Father finish his speech, energy independent now, we go to our first director's meeting, we tell him to make more guns, and then it's time to go say hi to the Brotherhood. Now, if you know anything about the end game here with the institute you'll know that you have to take out three key items when you're dealing with the brotherhood of steel these are they just call them brotherhood generators they generate like an emp barrier around this place so the synths can't be teleported in so we have to take out those three things and i know for a fact that like gun bashing doesn't work and other shit like that so you have to deal damage to these three things see where I'm going with this here we have three shots left we have three generators to take out that's why we've been saving the three shots we've been saving I'm just I am just glad that my math actually worked out in the end like this because it would have been a shame to waste the amount of time I put into this run here so Take out the first generator. Some synths get teleported in. We toss down a relay grenade that brings in a couple more. Take out the second one. Toss down another relay grenade. Just to keep the Brotherhood off of us while we make our way to the third one. Third one's up in an aircraft tower because, of course, it is. So we head on up. Find the last one. 
charge up our rifle, take that out, and we're out of ammo for the rest of the game. Good thing the rest of the game is relatively easy. So for the Institute, we're just going to speed up the rest of the game here. For the Institute, all you have to do is kind of make your way to Liberty Prime and just kind of hang out. Right? They teleport in a synth virus, which infects Liberty Prime so that they can hijack the weapon systems. Uh, if the synth virus is destroyed by the Brotherhood, they just teleport in another one after a little bit of time. Fall down, head back up there, wait for the new synth virus to get teleported in. Just kind of hang out while healing up. Play with the dude's severed head for a little bit. Forgot you could spin things on the axes while holding them in this one. Elder Maxon finally shows up. No idea why he's on the roof, but whatever. Synth teleports in to teleport us out because they're taking down the Pridwin, and with that, we've beat Fallout 4 with only 10 shots. Sure, if I would have thought a little further ahead and or known how the game works internally with not being able to proc the mini cutscenes when you have things aggroed on you, I could have thought about it differently for getting Nick Valentine out and visiting the railroad. But hindsight's 2020, and uh, we're done here. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again to Casual Loop for the idea for this run. Quite frankly, I didn't think it was even possible. So, thanks again.